Would you like to hear the biggest secret lesson that you can learn to become a better surveillance investigator? If you said yes, then this video is for you. Welcome to the PI Guy Tips, Tricks, and Advice for Professional Private Investigators just like you. My name is John Morris. I am a licensed professional private investigator in Colorado. Now, let me tell you, there are a lot, and I mean a lot of secrets out there to becoming a better surveillance investigator. Doing surveillance, folks, is truly half art, half skill, and half luck. I will let you try to do the math on that one. When I started out as a private investigator, all I did was surveillance. I mean, that is it, six days a week, 10 to 12 hours a day, sitting in my car, cooking, freezing, and everything else. And boy, did I learn a lot those first few years. Now, one secret to becoming a better surveillance investigator that I learned early on was being patient. I'll tell you what, if you do a lot of surveillance, you know this is a big skill to have. You have to be patient just about all of the time while you're out on surveillance. Obviously, you have to be patient while sitting there in your car waiting for your subject to go active, but sometimes you have to show patience way before you ever get set up in your stationary surveillance position. I don't know how many times I have pulled into my subject's residence area and there was just no place to park, or even worse, there was plenty of places to park but way too much activity to just park and sit in my car. I have had many times I had to drive by my subject's residence, get a quick time shot as I drove by, grab the license plate numbers and the descriptions of the vehicles present at the subject residence, then go sit outside because there was no place for me to park inside the residence neighborhood. Then I would do distance drive-bys like along a cross street a block or two away every 20 to 30 minutes so I can see if there are any freed up parking spots and make sure that my subject's vehicles were still present. Doing this is nerve wracking and definitely trying on your patience to be sure. But if you have multiple exits out of the neighborhood and no place to park and watch the subject's residence, well, you got to do what you got to do. When I have a hot neighborhood, meaning there is way too much activity when I pull in to set up covertly, it gets even trickier. Doing drive-bys from a distance on a cross street is fine to check things out, but people may notice that you keep driving by all of the time. As well, when it does settle down, you don't know who is still in the neighborhood and who left. For these scenarios, I make good notes of all of the vehicles I see around the active area and the people there. So, if I see a guy out scraping the windows off of a big white pickup parked in the street, then later that pickup is gone, I can pretty much guess that he left work and that might be a safe spot for me to park for a short period of time. Usually, if you can keep an eye on your subject's residence from a distance or through periodic walk-bys, or drive-bys on a cross street until around 8 a.m. It will be safe then to get a good spot to park in and get hunkered down in a stationary position. Usually by 8 a.m. most people have gone to work or are in the midst of their daily routines at home. One trick I use when I pull into a neighborhood and I set up for surveillance, be it a hot neighborhood or not, is to shut my car off, then wait a few seconds, then I open up my car door, and then I close my door. So if somebody saw me come in and park, then they heard my car door open and shut, they would assume that I got out and I went somewhere. I will also put some of my blackouts up before going into the neighborhood. Like I might put up the ones on my rear windows and put up my black curtain in the back. Then all I have to do when I park is put up my front window blackouts and my windshield screen and I am all set. Now the biggest secret to becoming a better surveillance investigator is coming right up. But first, let me tell you about this other big secret. This one, I wish I didn't have to learn the hard way. But I did when I first got started. I was so stubborn, I just always assumed I would be able to figure everything out once I got on scene. Sure, I did some preliminary work and studying of my subject, but sometimes I just got so busy working day in and day out, I just left the study work to be done when I got on scene. Not to say it was right, but my defense to myself was, man, you are working 12 to 16 hours a day. Take a break. Read that stuff when you get out on the case. You see, when you work a ton of insurance surveillance cases, you quickly learn that the work hours quickly stack up, but you are getting paid flat rates. So any corner cutting that you can do helps make the hourly pay go up. And one of those corners I cut when I first got started was to not read all of the client reports and data when I got it. 
And boy, did that ever bite me in the rear a bunch of times. Nothing like getting out on the case bright and early at 6 a.m. Then you discover your subject work graveyard shifts. Not much likelihood that he is going to be up at 6 a.m. And when he does go active, it's going to be later in the day. And you may have to eat some of those hours rather than try to explain it to your client. Or you get on scene, then you read your notes from the client and find out your subject is working part-time office work. For the policyholder and to top it all off one day a week that he works is the day that you are out on surveillance i have had to eat a few days of surveillance because of this type of a blunder the worst though is to get out get all set up then you realize your subject had a medical appointment the previous day you just lost a perfect opportunity to get good video and what is usually an easier day out on surveillance not to mention many times when subjects have a medical they do their weekly shopping and running around that same day. This big secret to make yourself a better surveillance investigator is to make sure that you read through all of the documentation your client provided well in advance to going out on surveillance. I would suggest to read it all the day you get it and make good notes of the important information. Then read it all again the day prior to refresh your memory. I often will take my case notes for tomorrow's case with me today. Then if I get a slow period, I can read through everything. Then on the day of surveillance, I read through my notes prior to leaving to make sure I have a good idea of what is going on for the case. I even make notes in my notes about good potential places to park, exit route possibilities, and where the nearest shopping and fast food and restaurant districts are located. This way, I am well prepared for whatever may happen. You can never be too prepared, folks. Make sure you do your homework and study the material multiple times before heading out on surveillance. Now, the biggest secret lesson that will make you become a better surveillance investigator is a very painful lesson indeed. When doing surveillance, like I said before, it really is half art, half skill, and half luck. You can cut it up in any size pieces you want to do the math, folks. Regardless of what you know, regardless of how lucky you get, and regardless of how skilled you are, you will get burned, folks. Getting burned on surveillance on those early cases, folks, really does provide the biggest learning curve challenge of all. Once you get burned, all of the what-ifs and the would-ifs and the could-ifs and the should-ifs run through your mind. Man, if only I had followed a little further back. Geez, I should have waited another 10 seconds before starting my car. Darn, why did I park there? I should have parked over there instead. There will be a ton of these in your future as a surveillance investigator. And you know what? Us old veteran guys are still learning from our mistakes too. Yes, even I get burned sometimes while doing surveillance. It just happens, folks. Sometimes you got the half skill, half art, but no luck working for you. What you have to do is mark every one of those challenging moments up to learning opportunities. I have learned far more from my mistakes as a private investigator and my mistakes in life in general than I will ever learn from my successes. So the next time you get burned following your target down the freeway, the next time your subject steps out on the front porch and starts taking pictures of your car, the next time you see your subject walking right towards your car screaming, what are you doing? Suck it up. Chalk it up to education, mend your bruised ego, and move on knowing that you now know a little bit more about conducting surveillance. Hey, here are two more videos that I made just for you. Thank you so much for supporting the PI Guy channel. And remember, folks, remember, folks, stay safe out there.